There we go. Fantastic. Seamless. Hello, Neil Hi, Bates, master at Pinewood. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Sorry about Good. the technical glitch there, but we managed to get it to work in the end. No, you've done brilliantly. You've saved the nation from my uh, from my. <laughs> Everyone's hugely grateful. Um, how are you? So, so just remind me how how many terms you've been at Pinewood now? Uh, well, this is my fourth term actually. So it's the beginning of my second year, but in many ways it it feels like the first year all over again because of course we went through the calendar last year, having to cross things out sadly and cancel various events, and so. Absolutely. But to have the opportunity to actually uh, full, f follow through with some major school events and have parents in and get children involved has just been, you know, it's great. But it has been the first time for my wife and I. So uh, it's been an exciting second year, which feels like the first in some, in many aspects. Yeah, absolutely. And just going back a bit, Neil, to give everyone a little bit of history, you were, had a successful career in the city um, for a while and then began teaching maths and French, I believe. Um, yeah. when to a headship at Moden Hall and obviously now at Pinewood. Um, was it a, a definitive move into the prep school world as opposed to senior? Uh, well, I mean, that's a good question. And people often ask me about why I wanted to become a teacher in the first place. And I could always identify that there was a burning desire inside me to get into education. I think that was sort of uh, always there. And this was only a, a enhanced more when I was actually living in London uh, with my wife who was working in a school for children who had speech and language impairments and every day I would rush back from the office and be absolutely eager to find out exactly what happened in her day uh, <laughs> and yet mine was sort of rather a monotonous day although incidentally I did enjoy it at the time so no disrespect intended but uh, what it meant was that that desire that was burning was sort of coming to the fore and mm. uh, it was really then after the birth of my our first son which was the trigger that was sort of the motivation to leave London uh, and after, you know, not too much sort of uh, deliberation, we decided to pack in our days in London and moved out to Oxfordshire, rented a thatched cottage and uh, I became a French teacher, as you say. But within 15 minutes of that first lesson, I knew I'd made the right decision and uh, we've never looked back since. So I've definitely got my wife, Nikki, to thank for uh, the rewarding career that we're now living. But uh, your question was why? prep age children and that's a good question as well I think you know clearly that was where the opportunity arose at the time I'm a great believer in seizing opportunities as and when they're presented to you uh, and ultimately you know I think it came comes down to the fact that I enjoyed school so much uh, mm -hmm. that I felt that I hadn't quite had enough of being a 12 year old boy so uh, isn't that sort of the, the reason why many of us get back into into teaching so uh I think that's probably answers the question yeah, no, absolutely. They're very special years, those prep school years. Um, and actually just touching on, on, as you say, last year being an unusual start to, to a headship, uh, I, I guess parental involvement in family life was, was never more than, than it has been uh, in the last year or so. Right. Do you think the children, I, I'm sure they were delighted to be back at school initially, but do you, have you seen the sort of different dynamics or nuances sort of now they are back, having spent a lot of time at home with siblings and otherwise? Yeah, definitely. And actually, if I sort of reflect over the last four terms, you know, when I arrived at Pinewood in September 2020, well, prior to that, I'd actually been having all of my initial meetings with my leadership team, with my governors all over Google Meet and Zoom. And, you know, that was a fairly extraordinary experience trying to settle into a new school where, you know, so much of the ethos of Pinewood revolves around relationships. And yet sure. we weren't able to meet and build the relationships with the sort of very important side of the triangle that are the stakeholders themselves, i.e. the parents. Uh, so every day I would stand on the drive and wave, you know, aimlessly through car windows. And I was convinced <laughs> that by the end of the term, I could go into the local supermarket car park and identify exactly which was a Pima parent and which wasn't. Um, but uh, whilst that relationship wasn't happening, I was getting to know the children very well and the staff. Uh, mm -hmm. And in time, and now, it's great to be able to uh, start to build relationships with uh, with the parents themselves. And I think sure. the setback of the second lockdown in January and February, that was a really sort of dark moment for us all, anyone working in schools or anyone indeed uh, in the country. Uh, and that didn't help in many ways. But, but the real tipping point, I find, was the three weeks that we were granted in March, just before the end of that Easter term, to be able to get back and have those three weeks was a real sort of shining light in what was otherwise a fairly dark start to the year. And, and it just meant that we ended the term on high. We all went off for Easter and then came back at the beginning of the summer term 
uh, and really hit the ground running. And, and of course, since then, it, it, we've been operating a fairly normal life. I think parents mm -hmm. have become slightly unshackled. Uh, they've uh, been desperately keen to get back into school. Uh, and so we've been able to organize lots of uh, events to be able to invite them in. And initially those were outdoor events. We've now got parents coming in site uh, into the building. You know, just the other day we had our bonfire and fireworks night and, and the, the number of attendees there you know, led me to believe that uh, you know, parents are really, really keen to get back into the community. And of course, uh, you know, the question is not just about parents, is it? You, know, you asked how the children have managed to settle back in. Well, I think it's the same in every school. I mean, we've all been so impressed uh, and uh, have admired the versatility of the children. First of all, they absolutely mastered the art of remote learning on their parents, you know, not yeah. historic iPad or laptop or whatever <laughs> it was. Uh, and then they, then they come back into school and they're told to go around one-way systems and wear face masks and hand sanitize on every corner. Uh, and yet, you know, uh, things were sort of tinkering along as normal. And yes, they weren't playing against, you know, unfamiliar faces on the sports pitch, but they were still with their friends in their lessons every day. They were getting fresh air every day. They had a hot meal every day. You know, things could have been a lot worse. And, you know, I think ultimately that versatility really demonstrated, you know, the finest qualities of, of the Pinewood children. So mm -hmm. it's been great having them back. And, you know, we, we, we sort of now, you know, look forward to many more days like that. Mm. And I think those prep schools, as I touched on earlier, I think the prep school years are so important for, for not only the children who are actually registered and enjoying your school, but it is the families that are investing their sort of early years in, in that environment too. It's a real community, isn't it? I mean, I think, you know, so many friendships, family friendships are made through prep school. It's a very, it's a very important stage of life for all the family. I think it is. And I think I was just saying to a guest who I was showing around today, you know, parents of children you know make their friends through their children's friends yeah. uh, and so therefore it's an absolutely crucial part of uh, the whole experience of being at prep school whether you're the child at the prep school or the parents of the child mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was soul destroying to sort of remove that side of the triangle for such a long time and uh, you know, yes we can get to know them through google meets and actually nikki and i you know we went through the process of, of meeting every single year eight parent online through the course of the term and uh, you know, that's, that only goes so far to building those relationships. And since then, we've had, uh, I can't tell you how many coffee mornings I've had this term to try and get to know the parents, but <laughs> enough caffeine to last me for another year, that's for sure. Yes, exactly. Speaking of parents, I can see all sorts of lovely Pinewood parents and school notices uh, followers joining us. So can I just ask anyone that's online that would like to ask a question, please do far away and I'll do my very best to include them. Um, uh, so just, just moving on, uh, Neil, there's so many an elements to educating a child. I mean, and, and as we touched on, prep school particularly is such a broad curriculum. What's your definition of, a, of a, an all-round education for a child aged 8 to 13? Million dollar question, Anthony. Uh, sorry. Uh, so I think, I think well, education is, it, is a complex sort of web of opportunities and priorities. But I think, you know, one question that stands out above everything else is, you know, how do we, how does the school get the best from its pupils? Mm -hmm. And we're always asking ourselves that question. And we, you know, we can all claim to enable pupils uh, to fulfill their potential or realize their ambitions, but it's how we, you know, can articulate that in a coherent manner. Because I think children, naturally, they are risk takers uh, in certain aspects. And yet, at the same time, they, f they remain pretty conservative unless they mm -hmm. feel confident of a positive response by those adults around them. And by that, I mean, you know, not just their teachers, but also their parents. Uh, and in some ways, I think that sort of presents the greatest challenge for schools in, in that we have to create an environment where pupils are willing and they're inspired to take risks that, you know, knowing that they've got the support and the enthusiasm and motivation of those adults around them, it, that will definitely enable them to branch out and, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately make those mistakes and, and stretch their ability. So, you know, schools need to encourage all of that exploration. And one way of doing that is by acting as role models. I think children need to see teachers making mistakes as well. They need to see us learning uh, so that they can, you know, respond accordingly. And you know, Pinewood is, it's an amazing school, but it's also brave enough to enable its pupils to develop qualities like inventiveness and creativity and, and, and open-mindedness. I think that's so important. And you mm -hmm. know, what, what is absolutely fundamental is that the education does not start and stop 
uh, in the classroom here is well outside as well. And I mm. think that's not at the uh, detriment of academic rigor. I think it's in recognition of the benefits of the extracurricular world of uh, prep school, the, mm. the sports and the music and the arts and the drama and all the trips that, that we can offer. Mm. Um, and I think a good prep school will already have a very inspiring and engaging curriculum uh, in place from the youngest age, right from our nursery children in the early years. Uh, but you know, in the wider world, I think senior schools and universities and then employers in the future, they're going to be looking for, for candidates who are articulate, for candidates mm. who are confident and you know, can think diff differently and analytically and you know, above all have the flexibility and positive attitude to life and, and which will help them overcome their problems. Mm. And I think you know, we're now trying to look at our curr curriculum and think, what is it that this generation uh, are going to be stimulated by? And I, I think it's not about exposing, not just about exposing children to core curricular areas. And I can see every single day the benefits of a broad-based curriculum, whether it be the chance for expression through music or the development of control through art or you know, creativity and drama or collaboration and competitiveness in sport. You mm. know, these, these opportunities you know, don't, don't appear every so often, but they're embedded, absolutely embedded in the everyday life and curriculum at Pinewood. Mm. And I think if you, if you throw in the enrichment side of uh, prep school life, whether it's joining the gardening club or we've got this amazing food appreciation society at the moment, or you know, den building or cross country running, whatever it is that tickles your fancy, then I think you can be in no doubt that every single activity that the children are involved in here will be building their character. Mm. And with this incredible rich tapestry of activities going on, how, what are your views on this, this um, assessment of years five and six? It seems to be getting earlier and earlier where children are sort of having to go into the assessments for senior schools, which I hope do embrace all those amazing qualities that you've described. But I, I wonder whether sometimes they are then very much hampered by these, by these tests that they have. It's just part of, of prep school life, isn't it, that you've got to get through? Well, I think so. And I think it's the balance that you're trying to create at, at your school as well. And, you know, I'd like to think and hope that Pima children have the opportunity to uh, to branch out and away from those pressures and learn about risk taking and, you know, learn how to cultivate friendships and develop mm -hmm. their own initiative and then and then use it. But ultimately to enjoy themselves here. And, you know, everyone talks about the pressures of pretest sapping that enjoyment. I think you know, we've got to enjoy prep school life. I think if you can't enjoy time at prep school, then we're not doing something. <laughs> right um yeah but, and ultimately they can do that through you know a really sort of strong ethos of ours here and that's through showing kindness to each other you know i think that by developing empathy a person's real happiness think can then lead to success but yeah. to develop you know those empathetic skills within our pupils you know we've 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 also got to develop them within ourselves as at Pinewood as a staff body so that we can you know be compassionate leaders and, and good role models for mm. that younger generation. And I think ability on paper it is one, uh, it's just one of the broad spectrum of skills and qualities that young people are gonna need to yeah. navigate a landscape in which that, you know, there's gonna be jobs and, and ways of working that no one hasn't even invented yet. So, you know, that's making us look inwardly and think what is it that we're going to need to prepare them for? Uh, mm. And at the same time, recognizing uh, uh, the entrance requirements of these senior schools. And I think that's where the less tangible benefits of a prep school education really comes strongly to the fore. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think whilst they always say success, you know, will breed success, I think that's true. Uh, but also great success can come from failure. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we all make mistakes. You know, I do every day. I tell the children that every day. I sort of choose the wrong colour tie or, you know, uh, whatever it is. And I think sometimes to admit that you don't know something can be as much a sign of strength as it mm -hmm. can of ignorance. And, you know, Absolutely. ultimately, one of the things we're always trying to do and, and grow is children's confidence. I think yep. you know, confidence is one of those things that opens doors and opportunities way beyond that of uh, exams and degrees and pretests. And you know, if for me, it's the most life's most valuable commodity. Mm. And if a parent um, is hell bent on their son or daughter going to a specific senior school, and you strongly feel that they wouldn't flourish or, dare I say it, perhaps you know, even achieve what they need to do to get there. I mean, that's not a great part of the job, but I guess it's an important part of your role. I think it is, yeah. And 
I, I'm very lucky in that the parents at the school are incredibly realistic. And, you know, I think that's uh, demonstrated by the fact that we, last year we had 50 leavers that went to 19 different senior schools. So I think there's a very strong message that Pinewood is not a school that hot houses children in a particular direction. Yeah. And I think, you know, they come in and right from an early age, uh, we start to talk to parents, we start to hold their hands and, and offer them guidance and support. And mm. we've done that this year through you know, presentations to parents. We've had a senior schools fair where we were really, really lucky to have so many senior schools come and attend. And I think it was a bit of an eye opener to some yeah. parents. And, you know, they came in and saw how many opportunities and options there are to their child when they leave here. And so then mm. it's really down to us and them, you know, in collaboration to find out which one. Uh, we feel is going to provide the right environment, the right atmosphere that their child can can thrive in. Um, mm. And I, you know, and I always, when I'm sort of talking to parents about trying to whistle down, you know, these amazing senior schools that we're surrounded by, uh, to the one that's going to be right for them, I say you can go and you know have that visit, and uh, you'll know, be dazzled by the amazing facilities, no doubt showing incredible statistics. But uh, what I say is that in, in addition to looking at the positive interaction between teachers and children in that school and how they interact with one another, one thing you should never ignore is your gut instincts. Mm. Uh, and I know that sounds you know, a little trite, but uh, I think gut instincts is an emotion that you know, should never be ignored in, in this very, very difficult process of choosing a senior school. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Um, and out of interest, I mean, Pinewood obviously is, is co-ed, um, co-ed prep school, which, um, you know, I, I imagine you're a huge advocate of. Do you think the co-ed um, approach lends itself well going on to senior school? I, I'm not being contentious. I'm just interested as to whether or not, you know, you think that the, the co-ed works particularly at prep school level. Uh, I do, actually. And, um, you know, this is such a co-educational school. I think the barometer, as I always say, is I walk in supper in the evenings and that's the one meal in the day when the boys and girls can sit wherever they want and it's just yep. so gratifying and heartening to see them sitting amongst each other. So it, it feels very, very co-ed uh, in, in many, many ways. But I think you know, we at Pinewood offer a quality of provision, a quality of treatment uh, and equality of opportunity. And I, I believe that's how it should be. Yeah. Uh, you know, the main benefits of co-education at a prep school age, well, you know, I think we live in a mixed world and uh, the role of a prep school is to prepare children for, uh, for that world, uh, not just at senior school, but for life beyond that. And, you know, we want our pupils to have an illuminating, fulfilling and, and enjoyable experience at school. And in a world of work today where uh, people aren't unlikely to be divided by gender, so why impose it at this impressionable age? But I think at prep school, at prep school level, I think you can inoculate against infatuation at this age group. Uh, and I think this is the impressionable time. Uh, mm. And I have you know, huge respect for single sex schools. I, I went to one and you know, many of them are brilliant, like mine was. Uh, but I also think that in a co-ed environment at this age, the children will be able to learn so much about tolerance and communication and managing conflict and supporting one another. Mm. Uh, if you can create an environment whereby boys and girls are living side by side, uh, in a well-functioning school, then that's a good model for them to take out into the wider world of senior school and beyond. My, my feelings about co-ed at secondary level are, are less opinionated because I think, as I said, this is where the impressions are made and actually, you know, they can go on to senior schools and senior schools are so amazing. At, um, the mm -hmm. single sex senior schools are so amazing, at included, including the opposite sex anyway. So, uh, yes, I think that's environment than it was. I mean, I was at a single sex girls school and we, I don't think we ever, ever did anything socially <laughs> a boys school. But that's very different now. I think it's changed enormously. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Neil, just on um, sort of a bit more about sort of home life, really, um, uh, balancing the, the rigours of being ahead um, and, and home life, I should think is, is a slight juggle at times. Uh, particularly when you live on site um what sort of are, are you able to switch off uh during the holidays and if so what do you like doing yeah i think yeah uh, uh, it is a juggle you're right and uh, it's a constant juggle and it's one that as a family you know you're always sort of trying to find the sort of best solution for and never quite getting there uh, <laughs> or sometimes it does feel like you are uh, but you know moving into this career and this life was a decision we took as a family uh, mm -hmm. And we're incredibly thankful for the many advantages that the lifestyle brings. And mm -hmm. you're right, we do live on site. We've got two young boys. And, uh, uh, and in time, they'll look back and realise how lucky they are to have such amazing grounds to sort of roll out into on a Sunday morning. Uh, yeah. 
school holidays. So, you know, I thank our lucky stars every single day. But, mm. but I am fortunate uh, in that I do have the ability to switch off and compartmentalize things. And you know, I don't feel I lose sleep over a lot of things. Um, I love taking exercise and, and naturally in term time, that's harder to do. So, you know, I'm a keen runner, but I think, you know, that exercise can give you a huge amount of positive energy. Um, yes. Running is one of those things you can kind of do in a short, sharp snap uh, in term time. Uh, yeah. And that's great. But we're very blessed to be able to call South Devon our home. So mm -hmm. in the school holidays, we sort of fill up the car, squash the dog in the boots and off we go uh, and spend a few weeks down there. And just having the ability to step away from school and, you know, have a change of scenery, you know, feels like a real sanctuary to us. And we spend yeah. time, uh, a very water-based life down there. We love surfing and swimming and paddle boarding and, you know, amongst uh, lots of lovely walks and playing games of tennis as a family. Gorgeous. And I should know this, sorry, is, is your wife, in? Does, does she teach at Pinebush? How is she involved in, I mean, she's obviously involved as, as supporting you, but is she involved in school life? Yeah, very involved. In, in, she wears many hats, as uh, many <laughs> head spouses do. Um, but she's part of a, a sort of newly formed dynamic art department. And uh, uh, she's one of the art teachers there, which is her sort of specialism. So it's great that she's able to spend time in the art room. And I think that's really sort of her... Uh, her comfort zone in there as well but uh, in addition to that as you can imagine she's heavily involved in the pastoral care she oversees all of the boarding uh, yeah. currently up to her eyeballs and organizing the Christmas fair next weekend which is, is not an insignificant task uh, and you know I'll be doing her a disservice to leave it at that but the list goes on yeah uh, but at the same time amazingly she manages to find time to support me and yeah. amazingly and look yeah. after our two boys Fantastic. A team effort. Wonderful. Well, Neil, thank you very much for your time today. It's given us a little little insight to life at Pinewood, which I have to say sounds pretty amazing all in. Um, so, Come and visit us. Yeah. Uh, well, I'd love to. And uh, enjoy your, your proper, well, what, the sort of new form of normality that we're now enjoying. So have a wonderful rest of term and lead up to Christmas. Thank you. You too. Very soon, I hope. All right. Thank you. Oh, take time. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.